Welcome to today's episode of The Heart of the Matter. Today we're talking to Mrs. Tara Fela Durotoye, who is the Chief Executive Officer of House of Tara, which is a, a beauty and makeup house on the same level as Gucci, Ferragamo, and so on. I know she's laughing, but that's where it is. So Tara, you're welcome to The Heart of the Matter. Thank House of Tara started about 20 years ago, 18 years ago. How did it happen? What, what motivated you to go into this business? Um, I, 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 uh, just before I got to the university, I got the opportunity to work at a, uh, a perfumery. And um, they had a side business that was cosmetics. Uh, I found that the customers began to buy more when I actually tried and sampled the products on their skin. And even though it wasn't the core business, it was just something by the side, we started to um, notice a, a growth in the revenue from that. I think that that also gave me an interest more in how, and seeing how women responded to having their makeup properly done. Um, it, it excited me as much as it excited the women. And when I eventually got into university, my friends would say to me, why don't you please help me to apply my makeup? And that was where the interest um, to, do, to do this thing, this makeup of a thing. Um, and, and then it just grew from there into what it's today has become um, what I consider to be a very big business, you know, um, and an in, entire industry as, as a whole in, in Nigeria today. You're running this business, but, and your husband, who is also very successful in his own right, is running his ministry, because I know that he's more into ministry now mm -hmm. than business. And yet, most people look at the Fela Durotoyes mm -hmm. and see a very happy married couple. But most people also know that you cannot have a happy marriage and run a successful business at the same time unless you do something. Mm -hmm. What is that something? Um, it's, it's very interesting, you know, our children, my oldest is about, is 14, uh, 13, and he, he was saying to us one day, he said, you know, when you guys talk about marriage, you talk about marriage like a if it's hard work, but when we see the both of you, it looks like, like as though it's easy. Um, and we said, yes, it, it looks like it's easy, but at the same time, it's a lot of hard work. So you, you're totally right in your perspective. Um, I think that both of us, for, first, first of all, came from broken homes. I, I was raised by two stepmothers. Uh, my father was polygamous. My mom, I, I was never raised by my mom. I never lived with her until I was in my 20s. And even when I lived with her, maybe for a few, few weeks in between. Uh, Fela also came from you know, a fractured home as well. And so when we're getting married, we committed to ourselves that we didn't want the same experience that we had with our, in our lives to, you know, to be the same with our children. And in that commitment, we said to ourselves, we need to work hard at it. So we know that marriage isn't easy, um, but we need to deliberately work at it. And one of the things we decided to do was to, to consciously say to ourselves, how do we ensure that every day I'm doing something to make you happy? Mm. And how do you, fella, do something to make me happy. So I'm thinking about your well-being, you're thinking about my well-being, as opposed to I, Tara, thinking just for myself. So it's, it's the kind of love where I'm thinking about you and I expect you to think about me. So because we made that commitment to each other, I can definitely know that I don't need to look at my back because I know Fela is looking out for me. So if we went somewhere, I would think about what would Fela want, what would Fela, what will Fela, what would Fela. And sometimes people tease us and say we, we are, you know, we're too dependent on each other in a sense. Uh, but I think that's one. Um, over the years also, we've come to realize that we've, we're very busy, but we're an intricate part of all the things that we do. So um, Fela is an intricate part of the, of the business of House of Tara. Um, I think he thinks about House of Tara even more than I do. Um, I also think about gemstones. So, if I'm praying, you know, I will think and pray about gemstone. Um, and so I'm a part of what he's doing, and he's a part of what I'm doing. I think that also helps us to kind of blend our personal life with our work. Um, I think sometimes in most situations when a woman is running a business, uh, because she's engulfed in the business by herself, she kind of isolates her husband or vice versa. And in that situation, you find that both people are running different races, and, and so there's no place to meet. And sometimes you find that women have to find someone else who they're talking to. Husbands have to find someone else they're talking to. In our case, we do a lot of pillow talking. You know, um, 3 a.m. we're awake. 
we're strategizing um, you know, on things that we need to do. Um, Fela has a big, big thinker, big dreamer. So he's constantly thinking about how, how Sotara can conquer the world. Um, and so I think that's also has helped us. Um, there are different things, you know, how do we keep the romance going? Um, so we have this Wednesday evening um, outing that we do where we go to the movies, we just go somewhere. Um, our wedding anniversary every year for the last um, 14 years, we've always traveled. So we will travel whether it's Kotono when we couldn't afford to fly, or it's Ghana when we couldn't afford to go international. We just went away for the entire week and spent time with each other. Mm. Just you look in my face, I look in your face, just the two of us together mm. for that time. able to keep that up with the children. Yes, and the children know. So the ones who are in boarding school also remember. So the last year, you know, I called school and Mitchell says, oh, I heard it was your wedding anniversary last week and you people always travel. So I was going to ask a question. Um, so one thing I've, I've learned from what you said is communication. Mm -hmm. So you, you talk and you, um, you share a lot. In terms of um, your children, bringing up kids and everything, how do you... How do, is it, how do you actually get all these things working together? How do you find time? Because you're growing a global brand. You have a global brand. It, it's not just a small business. How, you know, how do you do it? Um, it's tough, and I can't really tell you these are all the things. You know, mm. I can't give you any mm. uh, seven points to <laughs> answer. But I think, like I said earlier on, I think that um, because your spouse is a part of it, can give you a lot of support. Mm. So if I had to travel away, go away, uh, my husband will make a commitment to be with the children, do homework, and the things I ordinarily would have done if I wasn't there. Okay. Um, and sometimes even when I call home and he realizes that he hasn't done something, you can almost hear him, sh you know, his voice shaking like, oh, I forgot to do this. Mm. And it's the same way it's that if he's not around, um, he does homework most of the time. But if he's not around, I have to commit that I'm going to do homework with the mm. children, right? Mm. Um, so I think that that, having that, um, both of us being a part of each other's mm. lives. So, you know. so for young women watching, the marrying the right man oh, definitely, is important. Definitely, finding the right person, um, someone who shares also in your dreams and your aspirations, mm. um, someone whose purpose is tied to your purpose. Mm. Sometimes I think that both of you are running totally different races. Someone was having a conversation with me today and she asked me, she said, I see that House of Tire is so different from all the other beauty brands mm. or beauty businesses that are homegrown. Yeah. I can't tell you what it is, but I can tell you there's a difference. And I'm curious to know what it is. And I said to her, um, the beauty is the platform for us to empower lives. Yeah. And I'm more focused on impact than anything else. Then she looked at me and said, is Fela, do you think that it's because you married Fela that you had this I was actually going to ask that because I had a conversation <laughs> with someone. I was talking about different businesses. Yes. Someone and I were talking about um, different businesses and she said that, well, Tara is obviously going to be successful because she's married to someone like Fela who obviously motivates her. Is, do you think that's a big factor in your success? No, definitely. Um, but, you know, what I was saying to the person today, she said, you know, do you think that it's your husband's influence that determined, the, you know, the, how your vision um, and, and, the, and, you know, you being impact-driven. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I would say that there was something that was already there. Mm -hmm. um, growing up, I, I got, I got, when I go and visit my grandmother in the village, I would always go to the houses of the poor, you know, people who lived around, and bring their children to my grandmother's compound and teach, and teach them all kinds of things. So I teach them what I'm learning in my private school in Lagos. But what's interesting was my grandmother was convinced I was going to become a teacher. So you know there was a seed of wanting to transfer knowledge, something about developing people. So no matter what it was I did, if I was going to be a lawyer, I probably will be a human, human rights activist or someone who's helping people. You know, people. And, and so um, with Fela, I think that both of us saw um, like passion. You know, we had like passion. I had a conversation with a guy who I found also was interested in impacting lives. And, and so that thing in him also attracted him to me and vice versa. And I think that that's one of the reasons. But of course, as the business has grown, even as, as a person, uh, I would say Fela is my mentor as well. Uh, my first mentor before anybody else, because obviously I spend the most time with him and he's six years older than I am. So um, there's a lot I'm, I'm also learning from him, even spiritually, you know, um, generally. What should a, a young woman look for in a man? Because we're, we're driven by materialism in, in our culture today. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people want to marry ready-made men. What do you say is the most important thing a woman should look for? I, I would say that potential. Um, I, 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 you know, when I think about my relationship with Fela, and he was talking to me the other day, I was saying about how he didn't have food sometimes to eat. And I, and I almost don't remember 
that there was anything like that, right? Um, I think that what I saw was someone who was able to share with me where he was going, and I was enthralled by that. I, I, I wanted to be a part of that. Um, he didn't have a car when I met him, but he bought a car s subsequently. Um, I think that we should just be look we should look out for potential. We should also look out for someone who's, who has the same value systems. You know, how do you want your children to be raised? What's your dream? Fela wanted to marry a very successful woman, right? Um, and when he told me that, I said, well, do you think that's possible for you to be successful and your wife to be successful? Um, but that's what he wanted. And ov obviously, I was someone who had big aspirations and, and big dreams as well. I felt like I was called, I had an, a big assignment. I didn't know exactly what it was, but I was certain about it. So we kind of met, you know, half halfway. Um, so it's really looking out for potential and not being... Um, carried away with today's wealth because these things and everything that isn't permanent it's temporary mm. he can even have today and not have tomorrow but if he didn't have today and you were with him then there's a guarantee that if he has and he doesn't have again you will still be with him mm. you know but if you followed him only because of the money um, and oh the comfort of life you know if I don't have this I can't marry him those are those are things that are material and they're mm -hmm. they're not eternal L let's talk about House of Tara again because I know Fela has an input, mm. but it's your, mm. it's your baby, yes. and you nursed it. Yes. What, if you were to look back now, mm. was the single most important thing you did mm. that you can point to as being responsible for the success that you've had? Um, I think it's in the seed that I've sown in okay. people. Um, so at a point in time, so, so when you say see, see you so many people, people investing. it's it's investing, it's in okay. investing in developing people to be like me or to who have aspirations to be like me. Okay. Um, the business has grown now and it's being run um, on a day to day. For example, I'm on a sabbatical at the moment, so I'm not at work. I haven't been at work for three months, and the company is now currently being run by a team of three people. And I remember one of them who came in, and she came from corporate. She she worked in one of the um, telecom, the, um, one of the what do you call, what would you call Microsoft? Okay. You wouldn't say tell, you would say IT. it's a IT companies. And she came from corporate and she's obviously worked for the last 17 years in corporate. And when she came to the company, um, she looked at one of the models. She looked at some of our models within the business and thought they were not that profitable. And as such, she didn't, she thought we should focus more on some other part of the business. Mm -hmm. And with goosebumps in my body, I turned to her and I said, don't touch it. <laughs> and she thought that even the energy in which I said it, she, she sort of got scared. And I said to her, that thing that you consider not to be that profitable is where it's tied to my destiny. If mm -hmm. I stop doing it, mm -hmm. house, this house of tire that you got attracted to will not be the same company. So it may not seem that profitable mm -hmm. to you because you're looking at money and numbers, mm -hmm. right? But I'm looking at lives that are being changed and trans transformed. The, the joy of going to the airport and bumping into someone's mother who says, my daughter became so confident because she found something she likes to do and she didn't know she could until she came to your makeup school or where she became a beauty representative for your product line and we focus on developing and training people. That feeling that I get, the sense of fulfillment, is not something that money can buy. You know? and, and I think that that strategy to, to impact lives, to focus more on building people, is I think to the to a large extent our success. So would it be true to say that the the material um, things mm -hmm. should not be the object of a business, but the way that you can impact lives? Totally, totally. Mm -hmm. uh, Fela says that uh, money doesn't have leadership competences. Mm -hmm. If you allow money to lead you, it will lead you astray. And I think it's one of my mm -hmm. greatest one of the greatest quotes that I've ever heard. Um, and I strive the same thing within the team. I say to them, you know, this particular business model, that is our rep model, is where my heart is. Even if I'm not here for the next six months, I want you to remember, if you don't remember anything else, remember that this model is part of, it's who I am, it's what I have been called to do, it's part of my assignment, and therefore you should guard it jealously. Um, we, we get so carried away, money will come. And I said to the corporates, you know, when she came in, I said to her, don't worry about that. Money will still come. Because sometimes when you're com committed to people, people become committed to you. Whether it's committed to your brand, committed to your philosophy, committed to the things that you are, it will come. So it's the same way you are giving customer service to someone and you give good customer service. Sometimes you get worried that, oh, am I spending too much? But the customer knows. 
we're, we're going to come back and talk about your team in a minute, but we're just going to take a quick break. Uh, viewers, stay tuned to The Heart of the Matter. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to The Heart of Matter, where we're talking to Mrs. Tara Fela Dorotoye, who is the CEO of House of Tara, a great uh, fashion, well, beauty and makeup business. Tara, you talked about how you, your business is running by itself because you, as the CEO, have been on a sabbatical for three months. But because you have confidence in the team that you have built, what are the things that go into building a team? Um, you know, what, what are the kind of things that... Um, one of them is, um, you know, when you found a business, first of all, sometimes position makes you a leader, right? In my case, I found a, a company, therefore automatically I'm the leader in the company. Um, and so as a leader, you have to know that your commitment to people is what makes them committed to you. Um, that's one. Two, I also believe that um, you have to develop people. And sometimes when, you, when you're building, working with your team, they can tell that you don't care about them. Mm -hmm. And then therefore, there's no reason for them to care about you. Now, I'm, I'm, we're talking about 150-something employees today. I, do not, I can't say to you that 150-something of them are all committed to the company. But I think to a, large, to a, a majority of them are. Um, as an entrepreneur, I've invested a lot of time in sharing the vision with the people. Um, and um, every day, each, in every branch across the country, there are over 20 branches of House of Tara, they, they have to recite the company vision. Um, the vision reminds them of where we're trying to go. So every day, whatever you're doing, you have to ensure that it's helping us closer to becoming what we want to be. So sharing the vision is very, very important. Um, loving the people and caring for them. The people only care for the people who care for them. So you first of all have to show care. Um, and showing How care, do you show, show care? care. Showing care is, for example, um, ensuring that they go on trainings. Um, sometimes as, as entrepreneurs, we always say, oh, we can't afford to train people. It's too expensive to train people. But there are places like Faith Foundation. There are many, many organizations, small organizations, organizing training for people. Sometimes it's not even just the cost. Sometimes it's small, but just the gesture. When somebody leaves the office and goes somewhere and they get knowledge, and sometimes it's not just knowledge about the work that they're doing, about something for them. So, for example, we invite Anomilola and say, please come and talk to the team about managing their money and managing their salary. Um, it's not about their work per se, but it's about their own personal life. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's one of the things, too. You know, this issue of paying salaries late, for example, um, we have a culture in House of Tara that if the accounts department doesn't pay salaries the day they're supposed to pay the salaries, they must send out an email across the organization to apologize. In some cases, you have to call branch heads to say, I am sorry. That's you, the account the, uh, accounts manager, must pick up the phone, accountant, and call one after the other. Because also, we, I want them to understand that this is important to me. People have paid their transportation to come into the office every day. It's unfair. A laborer is worthy of his, of his wages. And if you're not paying on time, then you need to apologize. And if you, do not ha if you can't afford it, then you reduce the number of staff that you have. And then I you should be the last to be paid. Yes. <laughs> you should be the last to be paid. Yeah. Now what other things? Um, um, I, I think also it's in, it's in building structure. People feel safe and comfortable. The reason why a lot of people don't want to work for entrepreneurs is because they think entrepreneurs are erratic. Well, that's the genius in, in entrepreneurs is that their erratism, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you need to put structure. So what a structure is, is building a, the business in a way that if you're not there, it can still run by itself. It shouldn't be a business that's run by emotions. It shouldn't be a business that's run by how I feel today. What is the policy? What is the policy on how we greet at House of Tower? What is the policy on how, if somebody's having a wedding, what do we do? Um, if somebody's, um, is for somebody's mom dies, these things should be documented and they should be shared with the staff. Now, it's, House of Tower is not a, a company with, fif, uh, with uh, uh, 5,000 employees. It's, and we started this when we were still 50 people. And sometimes I think that when we, when we start up businesses, we think that, oh, it's too expensive to, to do those things. You have friends who are in HR, who you can ask for counsel and say, what do you think I should do? And if I started all over again, I would say the two things that are most important after myself will be to get someone who can help us with our human resource and also to keep our books, right? But human resource, little things like 
if I'm coming to an organization, I want to know what my job description is. What do I, what am I supposed to do? And what time are you spending in teaching me? And stop having this expectation that because I am a graduate automatically, you know, I should know what to do. But um, in building structure and systems, I say to people, whatever role that you're doing today, write it down in a way that if my, if my cousin who's in secondary school comes and reads the instructions or standard operating procedure, he will be able to do exactly the same thing. So we need to start to document things. How do you want your office to be? How do you want customers to be attended to? And you need to share. Don't expect people to just have an assumption that they would have, they would know it. And being a CEO, when you put that name against, your title against your name, it's a lot of responsibility and we need to rise up to that responsibility. Okay. Yeah. Now you're away for three months. Are you doing something new? No. <laughs> so people expect my, I was talking to start, one of my old staff and he said to me, well, I'm expecting to hear about a project. I do not believe that you're not doing absolutely anything. Uh, but I'm just taking time to rest. I'm taking, you know, Sabbath rest. Okay. Uh, business is 18 years. Um, I think that sometimes we need to learn to um, grow in this new level. Um, and give people the opportunity to also grow the business as well. That's one, two. I'm spending time just reading, you know, reading Francine yeah. Rivers, <laughs> um, novels, you know, things I never really had the time to do before or I thought I didn't have the time to do. I'm gardening a lot as well. And I'm spending time... Gardening, you Yes, said, gardening. Wow. Yes, gardening. So I'm gardening a lot. So you have green fingers? Yes, I do. I do. And I'm discovering even more. But also uh, learning French. Um, so I have a French lesson teacher that comes to the house to mm. teach me French. So you're going to conquer the Francophone country. Well, that's not the objective. <laughs> <laughs> the objective is just to learn something new at, mm. in this time. And I'm teaching people to cook. So I, you know, I have all these my different um, delicacies, traditional delicacies that I can te uh, teach people. So anyone who's interested, uh, come by the house. But just generally having a good time. My, my youngest said to me the other day, said, Mommy, you've become more hospitation. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm listening to you speak, there's a lot of knowledge. Mm. And reading um, one of the interviews you did with a uh, magazine, you're constantly investing in knowledge for mm. yourself. Why is that important? Um, knowledge is important for different reasons. I think that for every stage and season that we are, we need knowledge to equip us for, for where we are. Um, I remember starting up the business and having to grow all this time. And for every new season, I need to have sufficient knowledge for the next level. Um, so I'm suddenly becoming a real CEO. You know, sometimes when you call, call that title, a lot of times when you are CEO of five people, you're not really a CEO. <laughs> but when you become a CEO who's running a company and the people who are reporting to you have worked in corporate for many years, they never worked on entrepreneurs. So they think entrepreneurs are mad people, right? Um, but then they also have seen what you've done, but they want to see that you've specialized in something. And as an entrepreneur, sometimes you have your fingers in everything. So you're an accountant and a supply chain manager, and you deal with suppliers and also the same customer service. Mm -hmm. And you're a master, you're a jack of all trades, but not necessarily a master of one thing. Mm -hmm. So this season for me also is, is trying to equip myself to be able to lead a certain caliber of people that I've never led before. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why knowledge is very important for all the different seasons. Sometimes even for marriage, for, for raising children. You know, there's a famous book called How to Raise Boys, and I have only sons. Um, and I, I, I went and bought it, sat down and read it. Um, I'm reading a book called Thrive by Ariana Huffington. And she's an entrepreneur who built a big business, right? And one day collapsed in her office because of exhaustion. And I think that sometimes when people leave paid employment, they say they want to become entrepreneurs because they will have more time for themselves. But that's not really true. Because when you become an entrepreneur, then you're a 24-hour business machine, seven, hours, seven days a week, consistently. And I just want to learn how to enjoy the moment, thrive, you know, also in this season. So knowledge is important. Coming back to marriage. Exactly. <laughs> how do you strike that balance between work and marriage, you know? Um, do you have any set rules? Mm. You talked about Wednesdays. Mm. Um, well, I think as the years have come, you know, we're learning on, on the job, as, as you say, as you, as you say. Um, there's certain things that obviously we've, we've been able to, we've consistently done over the years as, as a couple. Uh, but I think that the first thing is to decide that I am going to stay married that I'm committed to you, and I'm committed to the vows that I made. Now, I think when we're getting married, we must have someone who also feels the same way as strongly. So I was coming from a place where I was committed to that, and I was lucky to find someone who was 
as well committed to that. And sometimes it's in those conversations that you have where the person will share with you their thoughts. Sometimes someone can say to you, well, <laughs> I saw this, this, if I was married to, I would have left. And then you know that this is someone who thinks that leaving is, is an option. So for both of us, it, was, it wasn't an option. It was to also make each other happy. You know, I am committed to making you happy. You are committed to making me happy. And those commitments, and, and you travel sometimes, and you know how when you travel together and you're staying together for a long time, everybody gets on each other's nerves. Mm -hmm. And I, all I have to do is look at my, body, my husband's body language and see. You know, respect is also an important thing. Um, sometimes you find that, you know, I hear women talk to their husband and they use words like, he's, he's stupid, you know. And they say it's, it's funny, and they, th they think, for me, it's not something that I can do. And it's not just because my husband is older than me with six years, but simply because you also want to put things in place to ensure that you are checking yourself, that you're respecting him. Actually, I was, I was actually going to ask a question on that, because I attended an event where Fela said, you know, Tara is a tiger out there, but when she comes home, she's like a kitten. Mm -hmm. Why is it important as a woman, as a successful woman, mm -hmm. to respect your husband? Um, you know, when you, are, you, know, you have a business and you're thriving, doing well, um, sometimes it gets to your head, right? It makes you feel like you're something, and you're like more than you really are. And you have to decide, like I had to decide that, what are the things that I have to do as a person, personally, to ensure that no matter what it is, my husband is given the due respect. And sometimes it's in you coming back and you telling him what sort of decisions you want to take, sharing them with him, with him, and he telling you this is what you should do. And he sees you doing it, that I've told you to do this and you just go ahead and do it. Respect for me, I think, helps in, 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 in marriage because men are very egocentric. Right, and I think that yes, <laughs> and that's how God that and that's how God created them, right? Mm. Yeah, you know. So we as women have to learn to find ways, and respect can be different things to different people. Uh, what is respect to my husband? What is you know? Is it it is is it that when I'm with my friends, I shouldn't say some some things? Sometimes when you're talking to him, you can see from his body language what he finds to be disrespectful, and when he shares it with you, you take it very very seriously. Um, my, my, my husband and I, it's, it's, uh, it's something that f for me is clear that, you know, speaking to him a certain way is just not acceptable, you know, right? And it's something that I, I consciously worked on. Um, you know, I see my, my parents used to call me senior prefect at home. <laughs> so when I came to my husband's house, I also wanted to become a senior prefect. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to put those things in check. So we need to put, put those things in check. Respect is very important. If, it, if you don't respect your husband, the chances of him loving you um, and showing you love it's, it's, it becomes even more difficult. You know, Tara, we really could listen to you all day. <laughs> but we've come to the end of the time that we have for the program. And I want to say a great big thank you to you um, for illuminating us and the, the audience. Uh, so thank you very, very much for thank coming. You, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Viewers, I'm sure you've enjoyed watching this episode of the Heart of the Matter, which we had with Mrs. Fela Durotoy, Mrs. Tara Fela Durotoy. Uh, the, the, um, now, you've made me frightened of using the word CEO, CEO. but you are the CEO, CEO of the House of Tara. So, viewers, we'll be back next week with another episode of the Heart of the Matter. Until then, stay blessed. Yeah.